Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Barons of Boston podcast. My name is Joe Zanka, your host, co-founder, and COO of On Demand Storage. Um, and today, I actually want to do a solo episode. So I am um, going to tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit about my company, um, and you know, from an entrepreneurial perspective, and then you know, just kind of educate you guys on you know what On Demand Storage is doing, um, the journey we've taken and you know where we see ourselves going and you know maybe you know it might apply to some of you guys out there who are looking to take an entrepreneurial step or you know who are looking to i guess take a bigger vision take on a bigger vision of what you know you're currently doing and you know see how you can apply it outward because you know we've made i think this year a tremendous step in getting to where we originally wanted to be which is taking what we're currently doing, looking at the entirety of the marketplace that we're in, and then you know, kind of seeing where we fit best. And so I think it's been um, probably the most important realization that we've made to this point. And you know, it's probably not gonna apply across the board, but even in like a microcosm within your own market, your own industry, you know, for those who are looking to take the next step, um, you know, I think it could be helpful to just hear kind of our thoughts, what we did. And, um, and then, you know, obviously from this episode, I would love to, um, you know, maybe hear some more stories, um, of success or of innovation from you guys. So I figured I'd start off, you know, I've done six or seven episodes to this point. Haven't really done much of an introduction. So, um, tell you a little bit about myself, my story. Um, I went to Babson college, um, Graduated Branch High School first, you know, public school, went to Babson College. Um, it was a big jump for me, you know, from a um, learning standpoint, from a, you know, I guess education standpoint. Um, you know, I was, I guess, one of those people who um, throughout school, you know, I always tried hard, I always worked hard, but, you know, certain things came easy, certain things, you know, I had to work at. But when I got to Babson, you know, I quickly realized, um, you know, being surrounded by, some of the people that, um, you know, some of the powerful and, and very intelligent people that went to that school. And, and not only that, but, you know, being surrounded by teachers who are expecting a lot of their students um, that, you know, I kind of needed to step up my game and really, you know, put a emphasis on my education. Um, throughout that process, you know, I played baseball. I got to meet a lot of um, really cool people, made some really good friends. Um, and then, you know, was fortunate enough to parlay some of those friendships into um, a company. And so after Babson, you know, um, well, actually, I'll take a step back. So my current business partner, um, Barrett O'Neill and I started On Demand Storage from a dorm room. So, you know, we were basically two guys who had full schedules, you know, we were playing baseball, and we had our, our class schedules and we had, you know, the daily um, life of a college student going on. So we didn't really have a lot of time within that to make money. And, um, and at, at that point in time in our lives, I don't think either one of us had much money. Um, you know, we were probably trying to rub a couple of pennies together in order to um, go to Chipotle or, you know, go buy a 12 pack or something like that. So we were looking at each other like, hey, you know, let's take a look around where we are and, and see what we can do. So we came up with an idea to store college students belongings over the summer. Um, so basically what students could do is they could pack up their belongings. We would come get them from their dorm room, we'd put them in storage for them. And then at the end of the summer, when they came back to Babson, we were coming back to Babson too. So we would just deliver them back. So we created a website. Um, we passed out, you know, thousands of flyers. Um, we had no idea what was going to happen. You know, we'd used a little bit of word of mouth and we ended up getting about 70 students to sign up. Um, for the first year that we did this. And so we rented a U-Haul truck. We had to store, you know, a lot of the stuff, honestly, in Barrett's um, parents' basement, um, which is a nice finished basement. So I'm sure they were happy about that. Um, but it's a great climate controlled storage place. So it worked out well. And we looked at each other and, you know, at the end of the day, we, I think, put probably between eight and $10,000 in our pockets, which is way more money than we had ever made doing anything else. So, you know, we thought we were onto something the next year we did the same thing. Um, I think we probably got around the same amount of kids, you know, which is great, but we, we learned a little bit about what we did last year. So we were able to do it smoother, um, got more, you know, storage units, 
kind of invested in making it easier than going through, you know, his parents' bulkhead and trying to, you know, bring hundreds of boxes and mattresses and whatnot um, in and out of a, a congested basement. Um, so long story short, you know, after graduation, um, we had done that a couple times. We realized that this has, you know, some potential, but, you know, both of us were focused kind of on getting jobs within um, the real world, corporate America, and, you know, taking the skills and, and from what we've learned at Babs and to, you know, apply those to the real world. So I myself got a job um, doing real estate for a company called Claremont. Um, they're located in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. It's a fantastic company. Um, they buy and invest and develop um, large multifamilies, you know, all across um, the Massachusetts region, as well as, you know, when I was there, at least they were down in Florida. Um, not only that, but they also buy Hilton and Marriott hotels as well. So they have a nice little portfolio of hotels around the greater Boston area. Um, some of which I'm sure people have stayed at, um, one of which being the Seaport Marriott, um, that I think was a recent acquisition of theirs. So, you know, they they were a fantastic company. Um, a lot of, you know, very smart, intelligent people who were working there that, that taught me a lot. Um, and, you know, I was very fortunate enough to get that position. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I guess I always kind of had that entrepreneurial bug, um, uh, even from a younger age than, you know, before we started on demand storage in college, it was one of those things that I always wanted to do. Um, I always wanted to kind of be my own boss. I saw the potential in, you know, not only from a monetary level, what, you know, the, what it could bring you, but also from, you know, just a freedom from, you know, a belief in yourself from a, you know, not having to follow necessarily a playbook that someone else created, but being able to create your own and, um, and, and kind of going with it. And so luckily enough for me, um, I had Barrett and our third partner right now, Rob Caggiano, who, uh, felt the same way. And now Rob kind of joined our business a little bit later. Um, but he has been, you know, up until this point, obviously a massive, massive, um, piece of everything that we do. And so the three of us kind of simultaneously quit our jobs and started on demand storage. Um, and to be honest with you, even though we had a combined 12 years of very highly focused business education, um, at the number one entrepreneurial school in the entire world, you know, has been for the last 15 years. Um, there's a lot that goes into taking that step and, you know, we knew where we wanted to go, what we wanted to do, but we did not know how we were going to get there. Uh, and we had some ideas and those ideas have changed a lot, you know, kind of throughout this process. So on-demand storage as a company, luckily for us, has always kind of kept the exact same, um, the exact same mission statement, which is to make self-storage easier for college students, residential customers, and commercial clients. Um, the self-storage industry is a $40 billion industry. It's, you know, there's a self-storage unit, one self-storage unit for every 10 Americans. So that goes to show you just how big this industry is. Um, and it's a, you know, just a lot of people, whether or not like they're, like I said, college students, small businesses, large businesses, um, or just day-to-day -day residential people that need some extra space are using some iteration of self-storage. So our goal was to just look at the outdated process that is self-storage and make it much easier for the consumer, whoever that may be. So we have implemented a software and the idea of picking these items up, putting them in storage for our customers, inventorying everything they want, and then if they want access to those items, you know, they can either access them themselves or we can deliver them back to them. Um, for an affordable cost. And so that's been our mission statement since the beginning. Now, when we first started out, you know, we got a investment from a family friend of ours um, to begin our company. Um, we thought, you know, at the very beginning that, you know, it was all the money in the world. Um, turns out that, you know, one of the industry, the industry that we were going into is a very, you know, kind of, there's a lot of overhead, uh, it's capital intensive business. And so, you know, we realized quickly that we were going to have to be pretty resourceful and, you know, long story short, we, you know, bought some trucks, rented some space and just started doing, 
you know, this business model um, with the three of us. So we were getting the jobs, we were doing the marketing, the advertising, going on the trucks, servicing all these people. And, you know, we got to grow the business to, um, you know, a certain level after the first year, year and a half. But, you know, it wasn't necessarily what we had set out to do. Um, but I think what it did provide us is a lot of knowledge about not only how the business works itself and how we can teach others to do it, but a lot of, about, you know, what not to do and how to, you know, in order for us to scale to be what we want it to be, it can't just be the three of us kind of running around and doing every single aspect of this business. So I think over the last two years, um, on-demand storage has gone, you know, a different direction um, in a lot of different ways. And it's been amazing to watch. You know, I kind of take it for granted a lot because I'm in it day to day. But, you know, we've been able to kind of build the right team, you know, hire a lot of really talented, smart, um, capable people. And honestly, carve out, you know, and learn about what me and my two partners are really good at and where we should focus a majority of our time. Um, and that has, you know, kind of allowed us to, to take our business to the next level. So if we fast forward a little bit, you know, on-demand storage. This is currently, we're in the fifth year. We just turned four years old. So we're four going on five. Um, you know, for those young moms out there, we're probably like 50 months old. Um, if people still use that, you know, I mean, always around 50 months. That's what on-demand storage is. Um, but to see where we started, which is three guys, one truck, you know, kind of operating out of a makeshift storage space to what we are today, where we have, you know, not only two large warehouse locations, um, one being in Randolph, the other being in Medford, Massachusetts, um, and, you know, working, doing business in 13 different states, uh, from a university level. Um, and, you know, building on a team of, you know, seven full-time people gets up to, you know, oftentimes 15 to 20, um, total employees during the busy months. Not only that, but, you know, where we've been able to carve out where we want to go, um, has also changed. So I'll tell you a little bit about, you know, kind of how we got there. Um, you know, we're the type of people that kind of are always looking around and, you know, you walk into a restaurant and you without even thinking about it subconsciously look at it and say, well, how does this company make money or how are they making money on that? Or, you know, what are they doing here? Or, how are they getting customers to come here? Or, you know, how are people finding them? You know, that's kind of how all three of us think. And so throughout building on demand storage to from what it started to be to what it is today, um, you know, I think we took a lot of that knowledge and it took a lot of time to learn about, you know, what else is going on out there? How are, how are other companies growing, you know, learning a lot about our industry, where it's going. Um, you know, we've been able to apply a lot of, um, you know, cool strategies to our business to get us to where we are now. So one of those things I think, um, which I covered in my last episode with my friend Miles is the ability to scale outreach and automate it so that, you know, it turns it from maybe me sitting with a list of thousands of college administrators and trying to figure out how to effectively reach them, get them on the phone, email them, follow up to taking that list, applying different tools and automating it so that these guys get an email to their inbox. If they don't respond, you know, it follows up automatically sending them, you know, little gifts and trinkets after we have conversations with them, nurturing relationships, you know, getting them on an email marketing um, campaign and just kind of constantly being there so that when the time comes that, you know, they recognize what we can bring to <clears throat> their, their school, their, their university, or even on a different level, you know, their business is moving or whatever it may be. Um, you know, we're kind of the guys they think of. That's been a huge thing. Another thing is, you know, learning um, technology that's been that's been massive for our company so we started off with one very basic one page website that um that you know we were thinking would it, it took like four or five months to build you know none of us ever built a website before other than the very very basic one that we built in our dorm room um you know we wanted to make this thing great we invested a lot of um our startup money into it 
And we've since changed it probably three or four times. But what we realize is that, you know, key components of building a website like SEO, using the right keywords, using the right copywriting on the site, making it appear where you need it to appear. So if someone, you know, if you're looking to do business in Ohio and you're looking to get students from Ohio State to sign up for your service, you know, you need to be there when someone searches Ohio student storage. Um, and there's different ways to do that. They're not going to search on-demand storage. They're going to search specifically for what they need. And then you need to be there when they do that. And so we took a lot of time and, and steps into implementing that. And now I think our website probably has over four or 500 different pages that are within it. So it's a giant, you know, stack. Um, you know, there's obviously a home page, but then from there, there's a stack of pages that when people search different terms, you know, we show up, we get a lot of inbound leads through having carved out those pages. Um, and then now we're continuing to learn and more and more and more about, you know, taking to the next, the next step and driving traffic on our own to those pages. So whether it be through Google ads, um, Facebook ads, social media stuff, you know, learning about those different applications and how you can take a page that's specific for one type of customer and drive traffic to it um, so that when people need our service, they're able to find us. Um, so technology, applying technology, applying scalable outreach, and then, you know, kind of building out a team that allows us to focus on what we're good at. So from the very beginning, you know, we'd realize that, Hey, we're pretty good at the sales and marketing thing, but, we don't get a lot of opportunity to do sales and marketing because once we make the sale, we're the guys that are going on the trucks and servicing the business. And so we always kind of thought and approach our business with the mindset that, Hey, if, if we're the ones on the trucks, then we're saving money because you know, we don't have to pay someone else to go do these jobs. Well, that quickly became something that, we realized once we hired a few people who are very capable and, and probably honestly better at us than at moving to, to do these jobs, we were able to spend a lot of our time learning these other things that have been, that have taken our business to way higher levels than we were when we first hired them. So, you know, we have hired very skilled people to take over the warehouse, take over a lot of customer service, um, applications that we that we have to go through every day with you know the, the thousands of different customers that we have in storage take over the jobs so once we once we you know get an inbound lead we make the sale um now we have to actually go perform the act and even take it to the next step and you know hiring someone to complete these sales so you know we've been able to hire team members who now are the ones that are fielding these leads as they come in scheduling them on our schedule on our own and sending out other people to go fulfill them. Um, it's really cool. And so, you know, we throughout this year have been in, you know, find a couple of different circumstances. We've had to hop in trucks and get back and get our hands dirty and, and, and do the job the right way because we've taken on a lot larger projects. But um, at the end of the day, we've been able to, um, we've been able to leverage these, hires and these strategic, you know, implementations of putting certain people in certain positions where they'll succeed to, again, take what the three of us are really good at and bring that to the next level and bring that to life. So um, just to tell you a little bit more about us, we went from servicing, you know, Babs in college alone while we were in school to now on-demand storage services over 40 different universities um, across 13 different states. Um, and we are the exclusive storage provider of, I would say, at least 10 to 12 of those Pacific, one of which being the University of Florida. So, you know, I've always been a Gators fan um, ever since they had Tim Tebow and that whole crew, even then, you know, the Joe Kim Noah days when they were good at basketball. Um, I've always loved the Gators. We are the official student storage company of that school. It's been a tremendous relationship. We've, we've had it for over three years now. We just signed another three-year contract. So, that all being said, you know, that kind of came from the types of things I, the types of things that I said, you know, looking around, realizing, well, you know, the three of us are doing all of these different things from servicing the jobs to getting the jobs to every little bit. There's only so much that we can grow. So, you know, how can we kind of take the next step, 
you know, maybe it's going to take a little investment. Maybe it's going to take a little sacrifice, but at the end of the day, it's going to be worth it because in the long run, it's going to allow us to do other things that are going to grow this business. And so we've gotten to the point where a lot of those things are going on in the background. People are out on jobs, people are servicing jobs, people are getting reviews, people are making sales while the ownership of the company is looking at the bigger picture, um, seeing where we want to go. So to this point, you know, on-demand storage is doing all that business. We're in Boston. Um, we are, you know, carving out a, a very good niche within the students, the, not only the student storage, but the commercial storage and the residential storage industry. Um, you know, we work with a lot of top Boston companies, um, the Cronin group, the Briar group, those are two restaurant groups that have dozens and dozens of restaurants around the greater Boston area. We do all the storage for them. Um, you know, we work with Shields MRI in the past to do a lot of moves for them. And then on a residential end, you know, we have hundreds of different customers who, you know, store their entire house to, you know, store a couple bins and boxes seasonally with us. Um, now that all being said, I think it's the next phase is, is where I'm most excited about, um, you know, on-demand storage over the last four years has been able to carve this, business out in Boston, we've been able to, you know, become a market leader, I guess, within the the storage industry around just Boston alone. And so, you know, at one, a certain point, the ownership of the company, along with, you know, some of our key employees looked at ourselves and said, well, you know, how can we kind of repeat this? And so when it comes to, you know, doing on-demand storage in other locations, you know, oftentimes what we do is we partner with some of, you know, the top moving companies within different regions of the country that we're trying to do business in, in order to service the deals. So for example, um, if we were to go to, again, Ohio state and we saw an opportunity to do student storage there, there was students reaching out to us, you know, saying, Hey, can, can you guys supply us with your services at the end, at the end of the year? What we do is rather than you know, rent a warehouse in Ohio rather than um, get insurance, get employees, get, you know, boxes, bins, all this stuff, go through, you know, all the different steps that would take, you know, popping up a business in Ohio um, that, you know, trucks, capable movers. What we do is we just, you know, make a partnership with a very strong reputable company in that region to service this job. So customers find on-demand storage, they walk through our software, they go through all this process to get signed up for what we do. And then on-demand storage takes those customers and hands them to some of the most capable movers, you know, in the country and especially in that region in order to service them. So their stuff is picked up by professional licensed insured movers. It's brought back to a climate controlled, you know, very secure warehouse and it's stored for as long as it needs to be stored for until it's delivered back by the same exact professionals. So what this has allowed us to do is rather than, you know, just do business in Boston or expand to one city and, you know, send a plane full of guys down there to go service a deal. Um, we are now able to do what we do in on a national level and, and, and it's pretty cool to see. And so the next steps and the future of on-demand storage is we've applied that methodology that we've taken from doing students, you know, in different areas of the country to the residential and commercial side of the business as well. So on-demand storage, the brand that you can see behind me right here is going to be, you know, an industry leading brand within the student store, within not only the student storage world, but in the commercial and um, residential market um, all over the country rather than just be, you know, what we are in Boston. So we said, Hey, how can we take these same methodologies that allowed us to succeed within our own city and apply them to our partners that we make, you know, relationships with during school season. And so what we've been able to do is we are now partnering with companies, um, you know, for that particular part of the business across the, the country as well. And so we have, to this point, you know, over the last five months been developing this program. And to this day, we have five, you know, kind of full-time partners running in different cities of America, you know, Providence, Rhode Island, Hartford, Connecticut, where we're popping up shops in Buffalo, we're popping up shops in North Carolina, we're popping up shops in Ohio, we're popping up shops in New York City. And 
we're taking our our methodologies that we've you know learned and gotten good at over the last four years in our systems and basically just repeating them in these places to maximize you know some of our partners biggest assets so you know as a moving company with a warehouse you know your biggest asset is your warehouse it's reoccurring revenue it allows you to you know during even non busy times you know traditionally for movers the busiest time of year is spring summer early fall the winter can get a little slow what your warehouse allows you to do is obviously keep a steady stream of income coming in through you know storage customers at that time of year in order to you know pay the bills keep some keep some money coming into your employees pockets whatever it may be so it's a very very crucial part of you know most of these larger moving companies business to that their warehouse is full and so on demand storage looks at that opportunity like you know now we have and are able to create self storage facilities using our brand across the country and using their assets so we've basically taken the next steps within that program to do that um, we're rolling it out you know and we're very excited about where it's going to go and I think that um, you know the reason for me sharing this is because you can see kind of how an entrepreneurial journey takes time. You can see how it takes a lot of different iterations, um, and you can see how you know something that might start off as just you or just you and your partner slash partners, um, and you know only a couple bucks in the bank, can turn into something that you know has a lot of scalability and potential. And that I think, you know, as itself is just a lesson to, um, you know, for me to just even say it out loud on the podcast, um, to, you know, take into consideration that when you're starting something, it's not always going to be what you want it to be immediately. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take, you know, um, making difficult decisions in order to get you where you want to be. And we aren't even close to where we want to be yet. But um, as you can see, the progression, we've taken a lot of the right steps to ideally get to where we want to be, hopefully, you know, within the next four to five year period um, of our business, you know, hopefully we'll look back and say, this next four to five years is going to be, you know, super growth mode and on-demand storage is going to, you know, end up being um, the company that we set out to start. And I think that, you know, I'm only sharing this because, um, you know, I think that it's important that obviously if anybody's listening to this, they know a little bit about who I am, what I do outside of just this podcast, but also just as, you know, words of encouragement, because throughout that process, you know, there's been a lot of um, times where you don't feel like you're, you're a successful entrepreneur. You don't feel like what you're doing is valuable. You don't feel like what you're dreams that you set out to accomplish are ever going to happen. Um, and to be honest with you, there's been a lot of times where I think all three of us have been like, you know, this just might not work out. We're not, we're going to quit. Um, it's the, it's a tale as old as time. Um, I know you've probably all heard this before, but, um, you know, for a firsthand perspective, I can tell you that, you know, one of the biggest things that got us here is just persistence. And so staying with what we set out to achieve, kind of keeping that um, focus on, you know, what it is that we want to do, but then constantly looking around and saying, well, what are they doing? What are they doing? How can we be better? How can we make ourselves better? And getting a little bit better every single day. And I think that a little bit better every single day just has a snowball effect. So you might just get a lot better one of those days. You might look back and, you know, triple your income um, month to month, you know, from well, last August we made X, this August we made three times that and it's not even the end of the month yet or whatever it may be um, sticking with something, not being afraid to change something that isn't working. Um, there's certain things that just may not be working and you know, you, you can, you might not even be able to make sense of why they aren't working. Um, but at the end of the day, they're losing money or, you know, they're taking up too much of your time and being able to pivot those things or, you know, even just cut them out altogether. Um, to save time, to save money is, you know, are important decisions that you're going to have to make that every business owner faces, but um, inevitably are going to lead you to where you want to go. And even though we've grown, even though we've achieved a little bit of success um, to this point, we are still facing all those same challenges, you know, kind of every day, every week, every month, you know, they're just on maybe even a bigger scale. Um, and so, what you learn from doing it over and over and over again is, you know, 
every little problem is in the end of the world. Um, every big challenge can be tackled. Um, and they, they only get a little bit easier to tackle as they, as they kind of come at you and you, you have experience in doing whatever the challenge may be on a smaller scale. Now you just have to figure out how to do it on a larger scale. Um, but all of these things, you know, building on a strong team, kind of waiting until, you know, internet pages marinate in order to start getting you inbound leads, um, learning different technologies. They take time. They take a lot of time. And, um, you know, I guess one piece of advice, if you're going to start something and you're not committed to doing it, or you're not, you don't have the time commitment, you know, might not be the best idea to dive headfirst into something until you do. Um, you know, I, for example, um, outside of on-demand storage, I've had my real estate license for a long time, you know, and I, um, got some experience doing some real estate transactions, you know, just to make a little bit of extra money. You know, it's, it's real estate is a passion of mine. So, um, it's always been something that I want to learn about and get good at and hopefully invest in one day. Um, but you know, I realized I, I tried to start basically another company off of on-demand storage that would, you know, not only probably apply to on-demand storage, people moving, people turning over their houses, different customers may be coming to us, but you know, also allow me to, you know, buy, flip, fix, whatever it may be property. Um, and what I learned quickly is that what I wanted it to be versus how much time I had to commit to it was just off. You know what I mean? I was still full-time on demand storage, still am, you know, every single day. But at the end of the day, in order to get the results or get to where I wanted to go with that other company, you know, I would need that to be my full time focus. And so, you know, I did put a, probably a good year or so into trying to get that off the ground. I wouldn't call it a failure. I would just call it, you know, more of a learning lesson um, that I tried to start something without really considering, you know, how much time it would take or, or really considering, you know, if my goal of this new idea is to do X, well, I'm going to have to commit this much time or this much energy or this much of my, you know, potentially even money in order to get there. And do I have that, you know, ability to commit at this moment and do it? Um, you know, the answer kind of ended up being no for the time being, but, um, you know, it allowed me to realize that, well, if I took that same approach to on-demand storage and I tried to start it, you know, without having quit my job or without having, you know, the time that needed to, to take it there, then a lot of those bumps in the road that on-demand storage faced as we got to where we are today would have completely, you know, kind of thrown me off of being, being able to do it, wanting to do it, um, and sticking with it. And so in order to stick with something, you have to be committed to sticking with it. You have to have the time to commit to stick to stick with it. And I honestly genuinely believe that if you have a good idea, you have a good team, you have, you know, enough resources, you can do whatever you want. Um, the amount of information that's out there and readily available to teach you how to, to develop some of these skills that I've talked about, or maybe you've heard from some of my other guests talk about, you know, whether it's SEO or email marketing or, you know, using a, a, a software platform, a, a software as a service to completely, you know, HubSpot, using HubSpot to automate a lot of the sales process. You know, those are tools, things that are so available online right now um, that people can learn. Um, but as long as they, you know, commit the time to doing it, you know, stick with it, learn about it from scratch or, you know, learn about it before you even start, um, learn about the different tools before you dive in, before you waste money, before you waste time. And, and then when you're ready, you know, take that leap. But when you take the leap, commit to the leap. And, you know, I would, I would even say go as far as committing, you know, if you, if you really believe in it, it's something you really want to do and you know that there's a market for it and there's, you know, some way that you can make it work, I would commit at least two, three years to it because, you know, there's, there's going to be times where you're going to say, this isn't worth it or I'm going to, you know, I got to stop or whatever it may be. But, you know, if you don't allow yourself to, that's when I think you'll eventually come out the other side and achieve success. And I think that, um, that's kind of the story of on-demand storage. You know what I mean? We, we started off with a plan. The plans changed multiple times. The plan has gone from us doing everything to now us focusing heavily on, you know, where our strengths are and growing the business as, you know, as far as, as far as we want to take it. So 
I figured, you know, I'd hop on here and share a little bit about me so that anybody who's listening that might not know me or anybody who's listening that, you know, I don't have time to talk to all the time. Um, here's a, here's this story. And then, um, you know, at the end of every episode, I always give a book recommendation. Well, um, you know, my, the most recent book I'm reading is called, um, uh, the 5 a.m. club. And it's a book about, um, you know, an entrepreneur and an artist who meet, um, you know, this billionaire investor and they go on this journey with him, um, learn a lot about his life, where he came from, um, where he learned these techniques, um, to maximize his day, not only from a business standpoint, but from a life standpoint from, you know, maximizing what you need to do every day to get the most out of, you know, be the most productive person you could be, um, in every area of your life. Um, so it's a really good book. It's kind of a long read. Um, I'd recommend even getting the audio version. I think that that is, um, you know, with audible nowadays, you know, you can plug that in, go for a run, um, and listen, you know, kind of clear your mind. So yeah, that's, um, that'll kind of wrap that up. You know, I think, um, anybody who's listening to this, that's looking to start something, anybody that's listening to this, that is on an entrepreneurial journey, you know, I'd love to hear about it. Um, I have my own stories. I have my own failures. I have my own trials and tribulations. Um, but I also have, you know, I think a lot of wisdom in just a quick four years that I'd be able to share. Um, and you know, maybe different strategies and, and I'm a type of person that's always looking to learn. So, um, you know, maybe you've heard a little bit about me, what we do, you heard from some of my guests and have ideas that, um, that, you know, we could take our businesses to the next level. You know, this podcast is something I'm just starting. Um, I really have no idea what I'm doing with it. It's something that, you know, um, it doesn't take me a lot of time, but it's, um, you know, I know it could be better, um, but I'm doing it, you know, for a very cheap, um, and free way. And I think that, um, you know, hopefully it becomes what I want it to be and it's going to get to a place where, um, you know, I can do more with it or, 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 you know, who knows, but at the end of the day, um, get out there, try different things, you know, talk to each other, talk to me, reach out with your stories and, um, yeah, fight on. All right. Thank you guys. Take care.